Hey everybody, it's that time of the week. It's uh, time once again for our weekly Jizz Talk and Show. Today, our guest is the one and only Kay Parker. Kay, it's a privilege to have you here. How are you doing today? Very, very well. Thank you. And uh, we're going to start off. And uh, again, uh, uh, this week, of course, is Kay Parker. Next week will be Kiana Bradley. And uh, Kiana is uh, looking forward to uh, being a part of the show. And uh, so we certainly welcome her next week as well. So we get things started off. And uh, Kay, uh, first question is, as I always say to people I, that don't have the same accent as we do, is that you don't have an upper Midwest accent. You seem to be a bit British. What, uh, what is your story on that? And when did you come to America? <laughs> a bit British. I've never been called a bit British before. I, I was born in, born in England and um, I left when I was 21. Okay. So, yeah, and I know it's still, I, 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 I can't say, can't, I mean, I can't say can't. Uh, all the years that I've been here, there are just certain words that I, that I, I can't switch over to the American way. I just, it just feels too, it just feels too alien to me. So, so I say can't, and I say car. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a few other words too. We certainly want to start things off, and uh, Richard Pacheco is is uh, a regular in the in the house here, and uh, we certainly want to start off with Richard because he always la- likes to add some insight to start the group off. Okay, I happen to be ready for you. Let me get my script. <laughs> <laughs> this is a man I love dearly, by the way. I don't know if anybody knows the history, but Apropos. we... Uh, I begin by saying, yes, I loved her. Still do. Kay Parker was unique in the business. She had a natural immunity about her, a true heart that made the beast of pornography stand down. She was like the good witch in the Wizard of Oz. We worked together three or four times in all, and were usually lucky enough to find whatever magic we needed to transcend whatever manure they were throwing at us. <laughs> we allowed each other dignity and humanity. We had the grace to appreciate each other. We brought the best parts of ourselves to the dance and we never had to apologize to anybody about anything ever. Kay Parker was Hall of Fame stuff and one of the best people that ever happened to the X-rated business. Thank you. And, and Richard, where are you reading that from? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm reading this from uh, a book called Hindsight. True Love and Mischief in the Golden Age of Porn. Cool. And, and can you throw us a, a, a little commercial on where we get that? Oh, if I have to. <laughs> you can order yes, it from me. To. <laughs> you can order it from me at www.hindsightbook.com. www.hindsightbook.com, and I'll send you an autographed copy. Thank you. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, Kay, are those, are those sentiments true both ways? Absolutely. Couldn't be, couldn't be more so. And um, I, I recommend the book. The book is wonderful in true Richard Pacheco style. It's, it's hilariously funny, it's poignant, it's so truthful, and it's a joy to read. So, so do yourself a favor, get yourself a copy. You won't regret it, it's a wonderful book. Fantastic. Sean Elliott yeah. is with us, and Sean, how are you doing today? I'm good, Patrick, how are you? Excellent. Good, yeah. Um... Hi, Kay. It's, it, it's an Hello. honor to talk to you. Um, so we have a couple of things of similar. Uh, one is my mom was born in Leeds. So a uh, couple of hours away, I think, about 120 miles maybe. Not far. <laughs> Not far, right? right. Um, it really is cool to look at you. It brings back a lot. I know you don't know me, remember me, but I was in the industry from 81 to 84. and. Okay. I did about, I don't know, 12, 13 films, and I worked with the best, and I worked with you. We had a scene, a um, couple of scenes. What? Yeah, you and me in Firestorm. Oh, okay. So you were East Coast. 
I was East Coast and 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 Firestorm, if you if you remember the uh, the film, I do. <clears throat> from 1984, and Eric was in it, and Joanna Storm was my girlfriend. John Leslie was your husband, right? And the girl, Joanna's character, went blind because she saw her mom in bed with a guy. I'm the guy. <laughs> Okay. It was yeah, okay. it, way back, a long time ago. Yeah, I wasn't that great that day anyway. I'd forget me too. But it was, it was really cool to work with you. And I always, people have asked me when I returned back into this, to having duality and accepting the other duality, more public, who your, uh, your favorite, like top of the food chain, it was you. It was, it was you you're you're an actress and i i come from a field of actor uh, regular television and theater so i was just fortunate it was the last movie i did so you knocked me out of that business i decided to leave after that i couldn't <laughs> top it <laughs> so i just wanted to say hi and thank you god bless you you look fantastic and thank uh, you. that's what i came on. i like coming on here but i was not going to miss this so oh, thank, you. thank you so much, Sean. Thank you. I was just talking to somebody the other day about how different uh, when there was an East Coast um, arm, shall we say, of the business. It was so different than yes. California, right? Right. Between, right. Very we, much so. Yeah. Very we different. Right. New, we were the newborn. They were the, the established wing of the industry. Yes. They started much earlier than we did. Yes. You know what happened in the... Uh, well, it's like anything else. Remember, like, um, we're, all, we're really showing our age. Uh, the wall <laughs> of sound. Everything went to California and, and from New York with a theater. Uh, remember, Johnny Carson went to Cal. Everything went. And I think in our industry, it did its time. And, and sometimes Jim South would bring some ladies or some people from the West Coast to us. But it was a different vernacular. And I really wish, if I had any regrets in that business, that I had gone out to California and met because there's some hell of good talent out there. And that's where all the main talent turned out to be, in California. And you had the scripts, you had the money. It was different with us. It wasn't just a loft in, you know, in Midtown or somebody's house in New Jersey, like Firestorm, it, you know, it yeah. seems to me. Yeah. I did, I did a um, little bit of personal history. I did a film called Chorus Call in New York. And it was, um, <laughs> it was a trip. Because I got to play this retired actress who returns to Broadway, and I still have some of the the items from that from that film, and and they uh, duplicated the front cover of a newspaper. I'm not sure which one it was, but it, and the the heading said Mona returns to Broadway, so my name was was Mona. My character's name was Mona, but um, it was the craziest experience because they didn't have a lot of money. I always remember the final scene of the movie is me as the retired actress <laughs> descending on this onto the stage on this swing with a couple of guys holding me in the bottom I was scared to death they were gonna drop me, right? There were no pulleys, no known machine. No pulleys, no no safeguards, <laughs> no nothing. Yeah, and, a small budget. And no no costume, so I'm standing there before they hold me up, and say, "Where's my costume? Oh, 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 wardrobe! <laughs> you know, there was no costume, so they just kind of draped a piece of something around me. Crazy." <laughs> yeah, Miss Parker, what did you wear today to the set? <laughs> we can use that. Yeah, right. I mean, I couldn't believe it, but I guess they made it work, and. Yep. Um, yeah, it was funny, but I felt I felt very, um, very much like a fish out of water because I didn't know any of these people. They were very sweet. Everybody was very sweet to me. So um, it was a fun experience. Okay. Well, I, thank you. It was good to talk to you. And uh, I think it was Cecil Howard, I think, on that film. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Um, was it Clark? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, yeah, Cecil Howard. Cecil, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to the work same with. produced as Firestorm. Firestorm, Firestorm was a good quality movie, and um, we had a we had a big premiere in Hollywood for Firestorm, which and Eric and I got to put our hands and feet in cement outside the uh, Burst Wild Pussycat Theater, and um, wow, that was 
that was trippy too. So yeah, cool. and they're still there. They're still there. We went back last when we were photographing um, this documentary, uh, supposedly on me. Um, we went back and we checked it out. It's still there. That's they awesome. Torn, they haven't torn up the pavement. Yet. <laughs> Hope they never do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Sean, for stopping yep. by, and then we'll check yep. in a little bit later. Hey, we need to get the birthday boy in here right away. Mark, how are we doing today? I'm good. Um, there you are. Uh, honestly, guys, I can't talk uh, more highly about Kay. She's really just a, a genuine, sweet soul. Um, I don't really have any questions for you, Kay. I mean, we've talked a lot personally, but g give a plug. I mean, tell everybody about your book, your documentary. Yeah. I, I just work. I just pulled it down. This is my book, and it's it's um, the title is taboo, um, um, sacred don't touch, an autobiographical journey scanning six thousand years. So, <laughs> yeah, who's laughing? <laughs> one of the things, one of my gifts. Um, as a spiritual counselor is to work with people in terms of looking at their past lives, if it's relevant, it's not relevant for everybody. And um, I've looked at mine in depth and to make sense of this lifetime, you know, I'm, it's, it's kind of like I was talking to somebody the other, the other day and they said, so what is it that you do? And I said, well, one of the things that I do is help people to understand why they're here because we all have a purpose and a mission. And a lot of people who are who are flailing around, having a hard, really hard time, and and especially people who are drawn to suicide and other desperate measures, it, they're not aware of why they're here. So if you can find the reason, you know that the purpose, it gives it gives you roots again, and uh, it gives you a reason to be. So that's one of the things, right, Casey? Yeah. Um, so it's one of the things that I do with people. So when I sat down to write this book, actually, when I, it was written over a period of about 10 years. And when I put it together, I, it, was, it was a real challenge because I had to, I was literally sitting on the floor surrounded by paper and chapters. And, and um, I knew that I had to include past lives, my own personal past lives. Not, not, uh, not in a big way, but in a way that, that you know, made sense to me, because that's the most important thing. <laughs> so, um, so it fits together. It kind of explains why I'm here, why I do what I do, why I am who I am, why I, why love at all costs is my is my motto. Basically, it's like it's. <laughs> somebody was asking me the other day. Um, um, I'm not going to tell the story, but, but there was an individual who was being a bad boy. We'll leave it at that. And uh, this friend of mine wanted to call him a bad name. And I said, no, we don't do that. We just, we just send him love and good wishes. And that's it. Be done with it. So, <laughs> um, because um, I'm committed. Somebody make a song out of that. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Well, where do Oops. we get where do we get your book, Kay? Uh, from me, um, from if you go to my website, which is kaytaylorparker.com, and follow follow the prompts, and um, I I ship it personally. Okay, I'll I'll get that when we get the website yeah. put up for our show. Uh, and I, I believe Kay, right now, I think your uh, documentary is free on Amazon Prime as well. If any, probably it probably is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I enjoy, I enjoy that. I enjoy the the meeting Doctor uh, Doctor David too. Go ahead, Mark. You've met him, just... Patrick. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, you've met Doctor David. Yeah. yeah, David, who was basically responsible um, for making it, and how he's in it, how he does a, how he does Howie in the beginning of it so beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can't, was, I can't see you. You're so okay? tiny. I can barely see you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> all right okay all right we have an international crowd here today we spared no expense to fly joey from australia in and uh joey how are we doing uh, what time is it down there you did you guys have the time change too or not good morning patrick how are you good that's good yeah now it's um it's quarter past 10 in the morning here and um 
I thought it was going to be 11 o'clock, but um, I've been so busy going to doctors back and forward. Um, I'm the boy that cries wolf. For my second of Monday, I have to have a sick day to enter these Zoom conference. Actually, I um, copped a good one now. So, um, yeah, I um, yeah, just got a bruised elbow. It's all um, busted up. So um, I got to see a doctor for more scans, but... um. It's all good, just a um, bit of aspirins, bit of painkillers, and um, should be fine, so to speak. So, yeah, um, I'm doing okay. I'm doing it's good to see everybody here today. It's, it's a good crowd. Um, is Jose um, in today or is he, he couldn't make it? He couldn't make it, but uh, Kay's here. Yeah, I, know, I just want to say thank you to Jose for last week for answering that question for PT for me. I really do appreciate that very much. So, uh, let's get to Joey, uh, Joey, you have a question for Kay. Yes, um, just a quick question. I hope it's not um, too hard to answer. It is, don't worry about it. I don't want to be too rude. But um, when you start in, in your career and being um, in the earlier peak, um, the obstacles you had to face and challenge, especially when, um, oh, goodness gracious me, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go back my, uh, my youth here now as a kid in school watching it. Um, when um, Taboo first came out and okay it's sort of just like a, a story don't, it, don't take it serious it's just a, a movie but yeah. a lot of um, the scene of like the mother and the son um, how was it the, 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 such a challenging role but also to the public like um, a lot of people took it very serious it's like look it's just a it's a movie it's a storyline don't take it too serious how does how that impact back then? Because I was only, I mean, I was only 14, 15 years old when I first got my eyes on it. I know I shouldn't watch it because I was under 18, but of course back then any, anything was possible to watch. Right. So um, I, I turned the role down twice before oh. I finally accepted it. Yeah. Um, because I, I took my career very seriously. Some people mm. said I took it way too seriously, but but see, I I knew what my mission was on on the planet, so mm. I was trying to stay true to my mission and my integrity, and uh, so I sat with literally I sat with my guides in meditation, and I said, they keep coming back, you know they you know the 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 producer wanted me badly, um, oh. so for whatever reason, you know. Um, and uh, should I do this? Should should I do this? And I I just you know went deep into my beingness, and I got a yes, I should do it. So um, yeah, I was conflicted for obvious reasons, but there's a chapter that I, I write about it in the book, um, a chapter about why I believe I did it, and the high what I call the higher purpose. It's like you know. <laughs> I wasn't the only one guiding me forward, shall we say, you know, I have a, okay, whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of guides, right? And so they were mm. saying, do it, there's a higher purpose and you may come to understand it, you may not, either way, either way, your presence is needed. So, um, and, and yeah, I mean, I've heard this from a lot of people, it's like the storyline didn't matter, you could just throw it out, but, but, um, uh, I, if, if the number of requests or questions I still get from gentlemen about, about their relationship with their mother and the desire for a different kind of relationship with their mother, namely incestuous, if, if that's any indication, mm. then um, that's certainly one of the reasons that I, that I did it. It's like to bring, to bring consciousness to bring awareness um and and ultimately non-judgment to help people move through it's the most common thing i think mm. uh, for many men and which which doesn't say that you're supposed to move forward that you're supposed to move on it that's not what it's saying at all it's just simply saying don't judge yourself right Fair because enough. because judgment is the worst of the plagues on the planet right and shame no. And shame, uh, which, yeah. Go I ahead. get that a lot to myself sometimes. Always, always judge yourself all the time. Put yourself yeah. down. You should be putting yourself up, but yeah. 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 I, I get that all the time. Put yourself up. <laughs> I try to. I try to. 
I yeah. try to. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, that's, that's, I'm, I'd love to answer more questions, but I'm not going to be too rude because there's a lot of people that would love to ask you questions. But um, thank you so much for coming here tonight with Patrick and everyone else, and God bless you. Um, just very, like I say, I'm lost for words here, um, a privilege to actually talk to you, Kate. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. You too. Thank and, you so um, much. Please, um, with, with you and everyone else, just, um, I know with the COVID going around, but just please everyone take it safe, okay, at the moment now. Thanks a lot, Joey. You bet. Take care. Thank you. Uh, we also have an, another international caller, and uh, this is via telephone, and she's calling in from Canada. And Tara, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Kay. Hi. Hello, Tara. Hi. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of yours, and I'm a little nervous, but... Okay, no need. Um, my, que my question was, uh, you may not remember him, but I wanted to know what the late Kevin James, who played junior in Taboo 2 and was in Fast Cars, Fast Women with you, what he was like off set. He comes across as very nice and likable guy. Yeah, um, I, would, I would say, yeah, that's, he came across as a nice a nice guy. I didn't know him, really. I didn't, uh, he, I wasn't able to get to know him any more than just working together on those films. So I, I can't really uh, answer that. Oh, no, that's fine. And uh, I was just going to say that I enjoy, there's these people that post uh, G-rated and PG-rated versions of different adult movies, and they did a version of Taboo and I found it quite amusing, and it was interesting. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> it came across. It came across like a single mother trying to raise her son, and uh, it was, gave a whole new spin on it because it yeah. suggestive dialogue. Anything was edited out. Too bad, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tara. Anything Thanks. You're very welcome. Right. You bet. Thank you very much, Tara, for calling in. And Tara's a big fan from Canada, so it's always great to have her in. Charles is with us. Charles is back. Charles had a perfect attendance string, and then he got a different phone, and then there was problems. And anyway, Charles, what's going on? My streak got broken like my birthday weekend. So I am back with a new phone and very happy. Thank you so much for joining us, Kay. My um, pleasure. Thank you. Glad, you know. Patrick always has the best guests on these programs. He really does. Um, I don't know what to, if I. Uh, all right, I'll I'll ask since I'm a homer. I'll ask this question: What brought you to San Francisco? Since I'm since I live in San Francisco and I'm from here. Um. So I arrived in San Francisco in 1965. Um. Did I? No, I didn't. Sorry, I lie. Um, my first stop was Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was there for a short while, and then I got on a Greyhound bus and went to San, went to San Francisco. And, uh, you know, it was, it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That was the age, right? It was a right. fun time. Um, and um, after um, a couple of years or so, I moved to Marin County which at uh, that time was really a music central. All the big bands lived there and I was surrounded by musicians, which was kind of curious. And I, I worked in retail. I, I ran this little, um, they were called headshots in, in, in those days. You know, we, you, so we sold um, all kinds of things from all over the world. Um, and I got to walk to work every day along the San Francisco Bay. It was heaven, it was great. And then, it, and then, um, so I, so I didn't live in San Francisco that long. I lived in Marin County longer, and okay. then, and then I met John Leslie, and my whole life changed. <laughs> so that's that's the short version. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna pick, I'm definitely gonna pick up your book. But thank you so Great. much for. Thank you for having me. You bet. All right. Thanks a lot, Charles. <clears throat> hey, we're going to check in with Tommy. Tommy, are you there and able to speak? No, Tommy shakes his head no. So anyway, we'll skip over Tommy and uh, we'll head over to Eric Monty. Eric Monty is with us from Philly. And uh, Eric, how are you doing today? All right. 
Patrick. Hello, Kay. Oh, hello. There you are. <laughs> I was in the industry from 83 to 99, Kay, but I never had the good fortune, the good luck to work with you. I'm, I'm based on the East Coast, and then I was in California, and a uh, very lovely woman. You spoke about the, the uh, guy, I have to get your book. I'm very much into past lives. I went to the ARA a few times, the Association of Research and Enlightenment yeah. in Virginia Beach. Yeah. And I actually, I actually did a past life regression. Very interesting. So I don't do a lot of it these days. I usually only, if if there's something that we, you know, a person is working through, and there's some pertinent information from a past life that can help them move through it, that's when that's when I go into past lives. But I don't do it for novelty's sake. You no, know, this was um, my situation. It was exactly as you said. It was an issue with me. And yeah. The therapist was, you know. Yeah. But I went there three times. I studied in, at the Edgar Case Library. Have you ever been to Virginia Beach? Have I haven't. I haven't. But I'm well familiar with Casey. Yeah, very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, I was an actor, and uh, I was on the East Coast, and I went out to California, and uh, mm -hmm. I always wanted to work with you. I mean, you're a very accomplished actress, and my very my late best friend passed away. You were his favorite. I mean, he just used to think the world of you. You're such a good actress, and he loved your British accent. Right? I guess it's British, is it? Or whatever. It is British. <laughs> it was very, very distinguished and things like Somewhat that. Somewhat British. Uh, yes. That's basically it. I have to get your book. I mean, Pat, and okay. When Aaron showed the book, I didn't get the book. I'm going to definitely get it because uh, it sounds interesting. It's stuff that I like a lot. Yeah, I mean, and, it's uh, not for everybody, but it's certainly, I, it's what I've tried to do is blend together all of my experiences in this lifetime, in, including, of course, my, mm -hmm. my years in the adult industry in into you know what uh what i think is what i call a higher truth so i've tried to blend it all together and mm. um yeah i like it <laughs> well, i said taboo i'm, I'm going to get that definitely i'm going to get it, it looks good yeah. and uh, i work with howard a couple times howard winners cecil howard and uh but anyway that's that but i'm glad to have you i won't take too much more time and there's a lot of people here but uh I'm, it's a pleasure meeting you you and, too um, eric Thank you. Right. Take care. All God right. bless. Thanks Thank a lot, Eric. All right. Hey, uh, Greg is with us. Greg has his gold gym sweatshirt on. Uh, that's sometimes how I identify people because I can't, <laughs> I, don't, I won't want to give out last names and stuff like that. But anyway, yeah. Greg, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? Can you hear me? You bet. Yep. Question for Kay. Yeah, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say it's, it's a pleasure to actually speak to Kay Parker. Um, I made a a post before the first scene I the first actual VHS video I saw was intimate sessions I think that's the name of it and she was in it and she had a scene with Paul Thomas um that was and 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 there was another gentleman she had a scene in with but anyway that was she was the first it was I was my sophomore year in college it, it was 1986 I saw it and, <laughs> and she's been a favorite of mine forever. And so I, I just wanted to say, this is the coolest day <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> to actually be, to see you and speak to you and hear your voice. Um, again, yes, I've, I have all the taboo, every single one that you're in, uh, taboo one, two, I don't know. I think I have three. I don't, three. I don't think I, have, I think, yeah, I think I do. But anyway, all the ones that you're in, I have them on VHS, still in storage. So it's been just a pleasure listening to you speak. Um, I know I didn't have a question. I just love to see you and tell you, I love watching you. I'm not going to lie. I love watching you. <laughs> so that's it. Thank All you right. so much, Greg. You're, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Casey's had his hand up for a little bit, so uh, let's let's check in with Casey. Casey is the one that always uh, he's our kind of our room fact checker. If you want the story straight, Casey knows what, what time he's it the, is. He's the guy, huh? Okay. I try. <laughs> Hi, Kay. It's such a pleasure to to see you, and thank you for being here. Um, I um, I want I've been thinking about what to ask you with, with given this opportunity, um, and I realized that I have um, all three versions of the Health Spa script. Um, from Cass Paley oh gave to me. Yeah, <laughs> it went through three different drafts. So yeah. I have all three of them. And so I wanted to ask about Health Spa because it was one of the first films in California that was directed by a woman. 
Yes. Um, and so I wanted Ooh, to know what that was. I have goose flesh on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was Claire Dia, Emily. Yeah. Emily. And, yeah. And so I wonder what that experience was like. And I, I know that I know Gail Lawrence had just had a baby. Um, and so she was apparently breastfeeding on the set. Uh, she was. Told me, so, yes, she was. So, she just had a baby. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love to know about your experiences making that film. It's a very special little movie. So. It was. And I always remember, you know, at the um, at the premiere, we had premieres in those days, you know, lots of lights and what have and Valderol. And uh, the love scene, or quote unquote, sex scene between Emily and um, between, why did I say Emily? Not Emily. <laughs> um, Gail. Gail and yeah. myself mm -hmm. um, was not hard. It was mostly eye contact and, of course, the music, which enhanced it tremendously. And it got a standing ovation. No pun intended. <laughs> But I, I mean, and that was amazing to me because, um, you, you know, be, I don't know, um, it, it, I was happy. I was happy that that happened because it, mm -hmm. it proved that it doesn't always have to be hardcore. Mm -hmm. it, right. it just has to have the heart connection, you know, and the, um, and the authenticity. And, right. and I, was, I was kind of like, again, a fish out of water because I'd never done a scene with a woman before. I'm not that way inclined. And, and I said to Gail, I said, you know, I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> 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 and she said, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll take you through. And she did. It was the sweetest thing. So uh, yeah. it was a really nice experience. And of course, Wesley Emerson, who directed it, Cass mm -hmm, Paley. Mm -hmm. um, boy, the things we remember. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> that was how many years ago? <laughs> it was this, oh gosh, 14, uh, third, gosh, 44 maybe? No. Yeah, 44, 44 years ago, I think. So it was 1977. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what Amazing. was uh, what was what was Claire Dia like as a director? I mean, that was her first movie directing. And at that time, there weren't that many women that were actually directing movies. So did you notice? I don't know of any. Or? I don't know of any. I think she was kind of like a first timer, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I think she was a little insecure, but she was so sweet. She was this little petite redhead and um, just adorable, just adorable. It was almost hard to take her seriously as a director. But <laughs> what did I know back then? This was only my what second or third film. So mm -hmm. um it was a very sweet experience. Great. Well, yeah. thank, thank you for, uh, thank you for sharing your memories of that movie. And I look forward to reading your book as well. I've been meaning to get it for so long and I didn't know I could order it directly from you because every time I see it on Amazon, it, it's so expensive. So I, I'm I know it's know crazy. It's yeah. I used, I used to sell it on Amazon, but everything's changed, but I'll do, I do it myself. So you have, Great. you know, yeah. Great. Okay. Ordering tonight. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. So yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I'll put the link again on, on the on the website under Kay's uh, interview part. And so uh, it'll be there. Uh, thank after you, Patrick. Tonight. So uh, Lloyd is with us. Lloyd, how are we doing tonight? Hey, Patrick, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to talk to Kay. I really yeah. appreciate that. And Kay, uh, thank you for coming to the show. Um, one of the questions I had for you, uh, you kind of already answered. Uh, you were in the States by 1965, I believe you said? Yes, yes. So my question for you is kind of more or less music related. I thought you were from Birmingham, England. Is that right? I am. I am. Yeah. That's why that, I was born there. I was born uh, there. Yeah. And, and that's the home of Black Sabbath. So I didn't know if maybe <laughs> you grew up with those guys. And if you did, do you have any, mem any memories of that? No, I mean, I didn't. I didn't really have a connection to the music world until I got to San Francisco. Understandable. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. And I do have your book. Yeah. Uh, I don't have it dog geared yet, but I, I'm going to start reading it shortly. Uh, I also have Howie's book too. So Howie, I still have to read yours as well, but mm -hmm. thank you very much, Kay. And you take care. You look thank fantastic. You. Thank you so much. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks for stopping by. I uh, want to hit up uh, Phil, who's uh, uh, here today. Phil's one of our first ones in the room. So we're going to have uh, Phil 
unmute himself. There you go. Phil, how are we doing? I'm great. Uh, thanks. Bye from Dallas. Uh, Kay, uh, I, I saw your documentary on Amazon Prime. I watched it quite a while ago, actually. And I don't really remember, but you kind of talked about how you first um, got into doing a lot of the metaphysical kind of things that you do. And uh, I, did you have one huge experience early in life that kind of led you to that? I would say, um, uh, what led me to it was a knowing that there was more to life than you know what you see around you. Um, as a kid, I used to lie on the ground with my ear to the earth and just listen to the pulse of the earth. You know, I, it was just, it was, it was really what kept me going as a child because because life sucked. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, I, my, my dad was an, an ex, um, he was, he had been in the Navy and he had PSTD and, and survivor's remorse. It wasn't a fun time. And I adored him by the way. And uh, so it was a hard, it was a hard few years, you know, those, you know, formative years. And what really kept me going was like I say, just really listening to what I would call now the other dimensions, you know, and tuning in and like knowing that there was more, there was more, you know. Um, uh, so was, I think a lot of what I call star beings and people who are uh, special, let's call it special, not better than, but special. Um, uh, they often feel like strangers in a strange land. I think that's the lament of the, what I call the star being, you know, we're, we're different, mm -hmm. we're different. And, uh, you know, we, we tend to go on a, a different um, adventures in life. There was a guy who, he was a researcher and he did a book called Starborn. He, he, he researched everything, but I, I'll never forget the little book. And he, he interviewed something like 500 people who, who felt this way. And this was kind of like the mutual uh, dilemma. A lot of people like feeling like a stranger in a strange land because, because they could feel that it was something much larger, much bigger, much more important than just the sort of everyday kind of minutia and, and, and the pain, you know, and the pain and the suffering that still, you know, exists today. So, um, you know, that was, that was certainly true for me. And um, what was your question? <laughs> you answered it. You, you, where, how it all started, uh, how you first yeah. you know, kind of got into. Yeah, so one thing led to another. And then, and then back when I was living in Marin County, it was kind of like, you know, hmm, I've been revisiting a lot of things recently, a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideologies a lot of healing modalities. And we, we, they all started up in, in the 70s. And back in Marin County, we're, we, were, we were exploring acupuncture. We were exploring um, uh, other modalities of healing. Eat it, we were eating organic food. We were, you know, we were, we were doing all that stuff. And then I don't know what happened, but we kind of took a couple of major steps back. And now it's like, we've got to pick ourselves back up again, especially with what's going on, you know, World War Three. It's like, we've got to, it's time. It's time to really get serious. <laughs> As if it hasn't been time for a long time, you know, to get serious about our beloved planet and, and beloved each other, right? Thank so, okay. thank you, well, thank you. Thank you, Phil, for stopping by. It's great to have you. Stop by any time. Uh, Jorge is with us. Jorge down in Florida. What's going on? Oops, I'll unmute you. There you go. Yeah. No, no, I really don't have a question. I just, I guess I'm like everyone else. It's, you know, an honor to, to meet you. And as the other, I think Lloyd was saying, I enjoyed watching you in Taboo. Actually, that was the very first porno movie I saw. <laughs> Um, and it's really an honor to talk to you and, and meet you, um, you know, and Patrick always has amazing stars here and, you know, thank, thank you for joining us. Great. Great. Thank right. you. In the meantime, Patrick, I'd love to say hi to Joseph because I haven't 
spoken oh, to him yet. You betcha. Yeah, Joseph is here. Now, did uh, Joseph happen to send you anything? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, are you, is he, is he live? Yes, I am. I'm right here. Oh. Hi, sweetie. I wanted to just say thank you so much for the roses. I can't get, the, I couldn't get them in the picture. I wanted to get them in the picture, but they're they're so huge and long. So, but thank you, thank you, thank you. It was an honor, truly. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Joseph, for coming by. And yeah, and, uh, if you have any autograph requests of Kay, you kind of run it through Joseph, and he kind of takes care of it for us. So I appreciate that for everyone here too. Tarek is with us. Tarek, let's uh, unmute you and, and uh, say how to you. First time, first time you're here, welcome. Hey, you are. You went first. Hi. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. Um, Well, first, I just want to say that I am in the presence of true legendary greatness right now. Oh, my. Wow. You, I have been a fan of you for over 30 years. And <laughs> actually, Taboo was one of, actually was the very first porno I've ever seen. And it set the bar very high for me as far as mm. pornography goes. Mm. And only very few after that have been able to really reach that level of quality. And it's like, I mean, most porn doesn't really do it for me. So I have to go back and, you know, watch, you know, the old school porn and whatnot. But I have been a true fan of you for so long. And... <laughs> I'm really without words right now because <laughs> I never thought I would ever in my life, you know, be speaking with you. And it's just, it's, it truly is a dream come true right now. It really, really is. I love making dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Tariq. I appreciate it. You know, I was just thinking that the other day. It's like you never, I think I said this in the, the last video that I put on, on uh, YouTube. You never know where you're going to go. It's like you never know where life's going to take you. It's just so interesting. And, um, and, and to be doing this, to be, to be, you know, engaging with, with all of you wonderful people, it's just like, who would have thought it? You know, it's, it's like, I mean, it's the technology and thank God for the technology. Absolutely. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, really thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tarek. Stop by anytime. We're here every Sunday night. Uh, let's uh, switch things over to Kathy and Kathy's with us. And, and uh, it's great to have her here as well, too. Great to be here. Kate, uh, Kay, I just love your, your work. Um, I've admired you for a long time. You just, you just brought such grace into your roles. And as a woman watching these films, you, you just really brought so much. And you're a wonderful actress. You had a lovely body. Uh, it, was, it was a pleasure. And uh, Tarek is right. You set the bar very high. Um, and so I'd like to ask you, you said that you met John Leslie, um, and I guess he persuaded you to get into the industry, which uh, I met him once or twice and those beautiful eyes and he's very seductive. So how did he um, convince you to get into the industry? Um, there's a story which I do not disclose because it was kind of like between John and I, mm -hmm. but basically, yeah, it was John who persuaded me, who, who we had wonderful conversations and uh, uh, he called me one day and said, there is a, a director in town. And if you'd like the opportunity to, you know, to get in front of the camera, this might be your chance. And the, the 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 person he was referring to was a guy by the name of um, oh help me out here how Howie um, wasn't it Gary Graver it was Gary Graver thank you yeah Gary Graver known as um, otherwise known as um, David McCallum Robert Robert McCallum Robert Robert McCallum. Yeah. Robert, Robert. <laughs> And, you know, I was I was kind of expecting the fat guys with the cigars when I when I went in for the for the meeting, you know, and here he was this very attractive young California boy who um, was who had actually I guess at that point he was still Orson Welles cinema photographer. So he yes. had quite an interesting background. And um, I I ended up accepting that role, which was a non sex role. It was in a film called V the Hot One with, um, with Annette Haven and John Leslie. And, and uh, 
I was terrible. I mean, it was my first shot. And my, I was, I was one scene, I was supposed to lift a glass of champagne and sip it. My hand is, is visibly shaking. And it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I played the madam. It was a, it was an X-rated version of Belle, Belle de Jour, the French, you know, movie, um, Belle de Jour. So that was, that was my first. And then, and then, you know, the, um, the grapevine was, it moved fast in the business at that point, right, Howie? Yeah. Um, yeah. And small, um, small town. Small town. And within a couple of days, I had another offer and then another and another. And it was like, it, it just went from there. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I All have right. one anecdote to relate. Um, the first time we had sex in a film, you were playing a character. I had named, sex with you. <laughs> yeah, you were playing a character named uh, Manly. I don't remember the. I don't remember the first name, but there I was, and there we had just completed a wonderful experience from my my point of view, and I was looking down at you, and I the cameras are rolling, and I just started laughing, and I improvised the line, "There is nothing manly about you." Right, 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 right. I, I, oh, I can't remember that character. What was the movie? Uh, I mean, oh, God. Did Ted Paramore think? film. Um, okay. I was a detective. You were a right. bad guy trying to get me drugged or something to keep me out from discovering the problem. Oh, the one with Eric Edwards, he played the movie star who... If they found out he was really gay, all of his films wouldn't be worth anything. So we're trying to keep that secret. I don't know what Tacey, what's the name of this film? I can't remember it. I should I it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember it. Right I, now. I, I was, I was in front of me. Sex play, sex play. Sex play, sex play. Sex play. And I was dressed in a in a like a, a French or what waitress is. You were a, 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 um, a maid uh, a maid. A maid. You're making maid. them I was in a motel. That's right. But just the irony because you were just such a woman. And then it dawned on me, your name, Manly, it just was the funniest <laughs> thing in the world to me. I want to just further that say funny. that I hope you're getting the sense out of all the things that are being said to you. And I imagine you've heard this a lot from other people off, off the stage. You were such a unique presence in that world that, you know, there were all kinds of sexy and all kind of lecture kind of vibes and just gross, horrible, ridiculous, low level, blah, <laughs> and you, 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 people remember you and you were none of that. And you, it wasn't like you didn't have a sexual being because your sexual being was incredible. Um, but you're not known for that. That's not the people don't look at you and leer. They look at you in, in gratitude. Hmm. There's a spirit of you that has always been present even before you knew it was there and people saw it and you were unique. You were unique and you are. And Hello. <laughs> I love you. And there's Herschel. Yeah, let's uh, let's have Herschel unmute himself here. And, and uh, I, I didn't get him the link soon enough. I should have got him the link an hour ago. But anyway, hey, how you doing, Herschel? Hi, guys. Hi, Kay. Hi, honey. <laughs> you, you look amazing. Wow. I love oh, your hey. hair. Looks so good, you know? Thank you. I went natural. Uh, you know what? It, it, this is not pandemic hair. This is pandemic care okay mm -hmm. but you look great um <laughs> I, I i think how we tribute to was really great but you know what <laughs> i masturbated many times to you <laughs> okay i mean how, how is it an historian and an intellectual i am the sleazy part of the business that he <laughs> refers to you know? but uh <laughs> you know the, the movie with you and uh What's it, what the the film that broke history where you were the mother having Taboo. sex with her Boo. son? I loved that movie. I couldn't stop jerking off to it. I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but I, 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 I actually <laughs> I actually I actually um, started jerking off to it way after I met you. And uh, I just want to say that you uh, were an incredible um, presence in every way and a beautiful lover. And uh, and I and I really believe to this day, had I not already been committed to my future wife, um, we would have had a very strong relationship that could have been la lasted at least 
<laughs> nine or ten months. And you know, let me just say this about working with you. This was, and 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 Howie and several other guys in the business. They were such gentlemen. I mean, you may have had a, a skewed sense of humor, but you know, but but they were always respectful, and um, and sensitive, and gentle. Because you and I, you and I played um, husband and wife. Yes, once. we did. Nasty nurses. Nasty nurses. Yeah. Yeah, Caballero. Yeah. Yeah, and then the um, the the radio show one. Um, so, and it was always all right. Like, WSCX. That was a uh, that was a yeah. hot scene though, at the yeah. radio station. Yeah. Anyone who hasn't seen, uh, uh, what is it? WSCX uh, radio, <laughs> whatever. Check yeah. out that scene with Kay and I. That was like yeah. you know. Craig side. Craig side. Beautiful. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to say that because um, I don't know if you guys were a rarity. I think you were, you know, but, but um, you know, because I was a little prudish. I've always, you know, a, a lot of times I've been uh, accused of being a little prudish. And, um, and it was, it's just... It's just that I took things really seriously. I always wanted to do a good job, have it look um, uh, authentic and uh, heartfelt. And it wasn't hard to do that with guys like you. So, so thank you. I love you. No, I love you. <laughs> and I know, I know how he does, uh, but yeah. uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think you were ever thought of as prudish, but you were thought of with respect. Oh. Because you you deserve that respect. Yeah. You were an intelligent, sensitive, beautiful woman who deigned to come into the hell pit of pornography and, <laughs> and, and class it up a bit. You know, <laughs> it's really great. Sure. You know, yeah. Well, maybe that was me being hard on myself, Joey. I do that too. You know, of, um, um, calling myself prudish. Maybe that was just me being hard on myself. But no, um, I don't know. I never. Uh, I never fastened you that way i just it was just like uh for me in meeting you and and working with you was just like uh it was just a pleasure to be with a, a real woman hmm. a woman a, a just you know and 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 the uh your british accent didn't hurt <laughs> that's ever that's everything Kay. it was nothing else <laughs> thank you darling thank you thank you no no you're and you do look great unbelievable i mean you know i mean i, I am withering away it's like oh. anyone who saw the the movie the time machine with rod with rod taylor when he's escaping the morlocks in the cave and the time machine and everything and time goes backwards and my, I'm decomposing at that kind of rate right now. It's, so, it's unbelievable. Really, is horrible. Again. We're going through. We're going through a hard time, and and um, it's been it's been a challenge for most people just to stay kind of, you know, on a, on a level where life is tolerable. Even me. I mean, I've been uh, um, losing days. <laughs> it's like I wake up one morning and it's like. What? It's Wednesday? No, it was it was just Monday. So it's it's been interesting, you know. So it's that that reality that hits you. And I'm going to be 76 this year, so it's like, you know, that's a reality to deal with. Wow! Don't like it. <laughs> well, you look you look amazing, man. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. That's Thank great, you. you know. Well, so we'll run into each other again soon. I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I guess there'll be a party at David Bertolino's by 2024 for sure. <laughs> you never know. It'll, be, it'll be sooner than that. There's a, I we know, have a mutual friend who lives in North Hollywood and um, um, he, before the pandemic, used to have a lot of garden parties with great food. And that's where we would run into each other. You and, and, um, and Philip and um, a couple of others. How, how, how he knows David. Yeah. 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 That's where, yeah, I met, was, that's where I met Kay was at uh, Bill Margold's uh, memorial service. Right, right, right. So, yeah, so he, the, 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 the parties will start up again soon, I'm sure. But at least at least we had those we had those few moments to remember. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. Kay, I had uh, I hosted uh, Herschel here this past year 
And this is him running through the cornfield of Iowa. He was he was escaping the children of the corn. That's great. <laughs> Make it bigger. Wow. <laughs> or looking for his father. You got, you got to look at the expression. I'm like, no, that's not it. You got the wrong photo. The photo we uh, never. Oh. Yeah, that's the photo. Oh. That's the photo. And and then uh, Patrick had corn store on the top and bottom. <laughs> now, now, that was me from my Twilight Zone episode in Iowa. You know, thanks for picking the wrong picture straight out of the box, Pat. Good job there. <laughs> you know, so, anyway, we had uh, had a lot of fun. Hey, Scott is with us, and Scott's got his hand up. He's had his hand up for a while, and so Scott, what's going on? Um. I seen a movie called Sex World. Uh, it, it appeared uh, she lost her the front tooth, got cracked by Joey Silver. Is yeah. that true? Silvera. Yeah. What happened was um, we had the scene synchronized. That was my first sex scene, by the way, on oh. film. Oh. Um, and we had it synchronized so that Joey, who played who played the robot would slap me around because what my character asked for was a real man. And um, uh, I forget the rest of the dialogue, but that was one of the, that was one of the lines. And, uh, and so when we actually shot it, he, we missed, I don't know if it was me or him, it doesn't matter, but I, I, he actually slapped me and knocked a little piece off my front tooth. My father, which is interesting, my father had, a little piece missing from his front tooth. So I thought that was very karmic. <laughs> like, uh, I raced into the makeup room and I said, oh my God, oh my God, is there blood? Oh. And there wasn't, it was just a simple dental, you know, I was able to get to the dentist the following day and have him file it down, didn't really, it, but it's, it's still there a little bit. But I thought that was really, really interesting because I had not given any thought whatsoever to my parents up until that point and um yeah it was interesting <laughs> yeah okay yeah. thanks scott uh, scott thanks for stopping by and and checking in with us uh, let's go to florida and aaron is with us aaron how are we doing today doing all right patrick thank you hello to everybody that i know in the room um richard pachenko herschel eric a few others okay i just want to say it's again it's deeply an honor and a privilege to be able to share this time with you today. Legendary doesn't, doesn't speak your career. Your career is not just legendary. It's absolutely fucking iconic. <laughs> and I just want to be able to be the first one to actually say that in the room because nobody said it yet. You've had an iconic career. You're in a league of your own and you've always been one of my favorites. I, followed your career again yeah you know being the kid not supposed to be watching adult entertainment and you know one of the first actresses i ever saw was kay parker and juliet anderson and um i just want to say that i'm deeply honored to even be in this zoom session with you right now because i never imagined the fact that i would be talking to you um speaking of which i am honored to be talking to you and you're one of the few that i can ask this question now that uh, Juliet's no longer with us and, um, you know, God rest her soul. May she continue to rest in peace. But your chemistry with her, I know you said that the lesbian scenes were not really your forte, but you seem to have a really great chemistry with Juliet Anderson. And I wanted to know if that was just the persona on screen or did you all have a really great relationship off screen too? And, you know, what was your relationship with her really like? Well, um, I think all of the above. When I first met Juliet, I, I didn't care for her. She, I, she felt abrasive to me. But once we got to know each other, we really clicked. There was this, like what I call the soul connectedness. And um, what you're talking about in terms of what happens on screen, um, on, yeah, on film, that was acting. <laughs> Very nice. It was so different. I mean, how different could two people be? But but there was a love. There was a love and a soul sister type of connection. So, um, yeah. So, you know, and it reads. And the, and the camera doesn't lie. You, you know, whatever you see is is usually pretty true. 
So. And did you, did both of you have uh, any type of like real relationship off screen? No, no. We really, we really ever, you know, it's so funny, but of all the people that I worked with in the business, um, I would say um, Richie Howard, uh, Howie, Howard, <laughs> Howie and um, Herschel and Paul, these, was, these are the three guys that I see the most. Oh, over the wow. last of the last few years, you know, because we're all scattered ar around, you know, I mean, I check in with Seika once in a while on Facebook, but um, we all have very different lives and uh, very private lives and, and, and yet the love will always be there. Just one other question, if I may, I know you've worked, you worked with a ton of people, you know, both men and women. Are there is there one female or one male out there that you never had the opportunity to work with that you wish you would have worked with? Um, huh. No, I don't think so. I think it was, it was all perfect. It was all perfect. E each one, you know, um, each one was different and, uh, and, at the very least, there was there was um, friendship and camaraderie, and uh, so I think it was all perfect. I can't Thank think you. of anybody that in this moment. I may think of it after you know we end this. I but uh, but I can't think of any. What do you think, Richard? <laughs> Richard <Howie. laughs> well, I always remember John Leslie when he was asked a question like, "What well, who's the best woman you ever had sex with?" And he always would say, "The next one." The next one. There you go. Yeah. That, yeah, a very sensitive, very sensitive remark. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you could, you could tell his. You really complimented <laughs> Kay with that statement. Howie. Thank, thank you, him. thank you. Can, I can very always good. depend on you for, for 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 such expert analysis. I don't, okay, I okay. don't, I don't take umbrage at that though. I, I, I get it. I get it. It's like yeah, well, you were all pieces of meat. It's great. Let's 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 <laughs> no, only let's you. Go on to, let's only go you. On to the next pan. You're the hunk of meat. <laughs> no, oh, I am no, meat. I am a rotting hunk of meat right here. <laughs> <laughs> oi, oi. Here. Let's, let's go to Joseph for a question or a comment. Joseph, uh, it's all yours, bud. All right, Miss Parker, how are you today? Good. Where are there? You are up there. <laughs> You've moved again. I'm good, Joseph. So, is the fact that you're wearing a mask because you're at home around your family, or? Oh, no, that's just a, sta a static picture. It's just a standard picture. Sorry. A static picture. A static it's picture. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that Hedy Lamar? Uh, no, that's uh, Christina Ricci as um, the Adams Manchester. family. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I thought it was Kay. <laughs> I did send her one. I did send her one. I thought it was fun. But I do want to uh, just double check the uh, punchline I wanted to check on is everyone's been talking about the various co stars. And you talked a little bit when we spoke the other day about Angelique Pettit, who is one of the really bad co stars. I want to see if you have any wonderful memory stories you could share with. That's about Angelique. Oh, 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 got it. I just realized what you were saying. There was a little static. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Angelique Pettyjohn, who was um, her, I would say, main claim to fame was the fact that she was in a couple of episodes of Star Trek, I think. Um, it was a couple, I think, Joseph, right? I've lost you again. <laughs> Where did you go? <laughs> There you are. And um, <laughs> I mean, even though it's a static picture, I still have something to talk to. Um, she was a really sweet lady. We did a we did um, a movie together called um, Body Talk, which is so fascinating to me because I'm as a healer. There's a modality that I learned over a period of about 10 years, which is called Body Talk. And it's a wonderful energy medicine. And uh, um which I knew nothing of at the time, but, you know, in retrospect, it, it's kind of ironic. Um, it was an interesting film because the director was a, was a, a woman, but she was Hollywood. 
and she had never done anything in the X-rated industry before, as I recall. And so she had wanted to bring quality. She wanted to do something that could really hold up. The problem was that it, it didn't it didn't quite make it as far as I'm concerned. It, it gave us, the actors, an opportunity to do some acting and to, um, and, and, you know, to be engaged in something that was hopefully going to look different. Uh, but it was about this woman played by Angelique who was dying of cancer. And um, you, you just didn't tackle subjects like that in porno. <laughs> um, so it was, it, it was kind of dubious as, as to, you know, whether or not this was going to be a success. And I don't think a lot of people don't know about this film because it didn't, it, did, it just didn't make it. It didn't, um, uh, it didn't have, it didn't have that sort of sensuality that, that, um, that the, the sexual aspect failed as far as I'm concerned. And um, there was no incest, of course, it failed. Well, there wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> but can Not I just? Uh, has incest. <laughs> well, that's sad, sadly that's true. But I just wanted to say, uh, I, it's, I'm stating the obvious. But you know that you originated the MILF concept. You are the first MILF in history. You know that, right, Kay? I've been told. You've been told. Okay. All right. Well. I think that's something since MILFs today are running around 23 to 25 years of age, you know, so uh, mm. I, you are the original MILF and a beautiful, beautiful woman. You're Thank you. Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you, you know, what? You, 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 um, one last thing, you know what, watching Taboo for the first time, it felt really nasty. I felt like I, I almost embarrassed that you were going to have sex with your son. And that's what made it. That's what made it great. I love that movie. It really was great. And hey, let's check in with Patrick with the mountains behind him. Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Thank you, Patrick. And thank you, Ms. Parker. It's like, I, I echo what everybody else has said here in this room today. And I just want to mention, you had said that your first movie was V the hot one and you were terrible in it, but that is actually the first movie adult movie that I saw you in. And I remember watching that movie because Annette Haven was, was the big star, but yeah. I was really drawn to you and your performance. Mm. And I thought, this is, this is a, a, a real actress here. And that's what made me start following you. So I thought you were terrific in it. <laughs> Thank if, you. <laughs> you know, if you had any nerves or you, you thought you were not good, it certainly did not come across that way on screen. I thought you were terrific. Well, thank you. No, we are our own worst critic, right? And like yeah. I say, because I was, I didn't know what I was doing. And, um, and but, um, but Gary Graver, the director, he was, he was so great because he was like a one, a one man show, you know, he, he wrote, he directed, he, he, he was the cameraman and he was very easy to work with. And, and uh, yeah, so it was, um, it was, it, I want to say there was really no pressure except for the pressure I put on myself. You know, sure. we're hardest on ourselves. So, uh, you know, and it was, it was fun. I mean, I, I had never been on a film set before. The way I got into that, the way that happened was I had, um, I had been given the opportunity to, to watch a sex scene between Annette and John being filmed. And I thought that was very interesting. You know, it was like, oh, wow. I felt like a voyeur of voyeurs watching on the sidelines, you know, and, um, and it was like, oh, cool. You know, that's how it's done. You know, it's broken <laughs> down into, you know, A, B, C, and D. And, uh, um, and they, was, they were so great. And then, and then I don't know if I was, I had already been offered the role I guess I had, I, 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 I don't remember, but, but um, the next day was the day that we shot that scene. It was like, oh my goodness. Um, yeah, but it was fun. Well, I thought you were terrific in it. And that's, that's the movie that, that had me follow your career. So you can pat yourself on the back. You did a great job. <laughs> Patrick, thanks a lot for that. And uh, let's got two more people left to go. Uh, Steve, let's uh, check in with you. Steve, how's it going? Things are going good, Patrick. Kay, thank you so much for uh, giving us uh, your time this evening to uh, talk with us. 
I appreciate that. Um, my question would be, uh, when you lived in Santa Fe, did living there help you on your uh, spiritual and metaphysical journey? Because I lived in Santa Fe um, in the mid 80s. Um, and even though I don't live there anymore, every so often, I just have that urge to, for me to go back to Santa Fe and just take it all in. I find it, I find Santa Fe to be just be like a very grounding place where I can go back and almost like with just the mountains, the air, the uh, energy, and just kind of reheal and recharge. Yeah, I hear you. And, and um, I think it was in those days, I think Santa Fe has changed a lot of the years. Um, won't go any further with that, but um, I wasn't there long. Um, I had, I had been through Grace. I had been given the opportunity to come to the states with a green card in hand. Didn't even have to try, because my, I had some American friends who were living in Germany. I was living in Germany prior to that, and um, they, they just handed it to me and handed me a plane ticket and said, if you want to, if you don't know what you're going to do with the rest of your life, you know, consider this type of thing. So I did. And um, they were going to New Mexico to retire. So um, I tagged along because obviously I knew no, I didn't know anybody else. And um, I, 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 I found a little, it was kind of like a little trailer to live in. It was, I've lived in some interesting places. <laughs> and but it was hard, you know, there were no during those times, there were no um, there were very few young people there. They because all the young kids went to school in, in, in Denver. So uh, at UC Denver. So so any friends that I might have made kind of had left and, um, you know, during the school school year and 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 there I was alone again. So. So I didn't really spend, like I say, that much time in, in, uh, in New Mexico. I loved it. I thought it was a remarkable place. The energies were, you know, the red, the red soil and the and American, you know, na Native American history was, was very cool. Um, okay. Yeah, but that's, where did you go? I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, and I've I've only been back once in all these years, so it's not. It was cool because you know what what was going on at that time. There were a lot of San Francisco hippies moving there. Yeah, um, yep. you know that's was one of those places where you could kind of like leave leave society and 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 go hang with the earth. You know, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. thanks a lot, Steve, for stopping by, and then. Uh... Hopefully we'll see you next week. Kiana Bradley is our guest next week. Can't wait to, to talk to her. Let's go back to Jim. We tried Jim earlier and uh, he had some trouble. So he logged out, logged back in. Jim, how are we doing? How are you doing? My, my headphones crapped out. That's why. Ah. But, uh, ah. Sorry about that. <laughs> but I just wanted to say it was a pleasure uh, uh, talking to you, hearing from you all these great stories you had. Um, kind of more of a, a newer of a fan of yours. Uh, just starting to pick up some of your movies now and stuff, but uh, just want to say, you know, just great seeing you on here. Thanks for Patrick to have you on tonight, and um, you know, just look forward to getting your books. Uh, definitely want to get that too. Cool. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Jim. You, Jim. Hey, we, uh, if, in case you do talk to Seika again, you know, you can put a good word in for us, and she can always reach out. And I think we're friends on Facebook, but I don't know if I feel comfortable enough yet to reach out and. So if, uh, can, can, can I can, can I just ask a quick question? Uh, Steve, the, uh, hi Steve Herschel here. That background you have on Zoom, that's incredible. How'd you get that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mute him. Steve. So, yeah, there's actually a um, oh. a Facebook page called uh, the Forty Deuce, and all it is is pictures of uh, of Times Square from the beginning days on up and that, that is that is that was, 42nd street right that is 42nd street yep that was my and, hangout man that was my hangout and i love I'm that like, this is a great one so yeah there's a facebook page and um you can download the picture and then on your zoom um over by the little stop video thing on the bottom there's a way to upload an image 
and then you can make it good. I, that I appreciate that. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Right. I want to wrap things up with uh, Richard Pacheco to kind of take us out and any final thoughts and see uh, kind of brought us into this. Well, uh, you can I would call Seika don't, and tell her that you have uh, Kay's endorsement and Howie's yeah. endorsement. And we urged you to, to, yeah. to call yeah. her and we urge her to go on your show. And we'll be there, too, to talk to her and help you out. All right. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Again, uh, uh, Herschel, I wouldn't speak for you because you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks Howie. anyway yeah i, I, I actually I, I i'll i'll put in a word for sake I, i'll give her a call i'm yeah. pretty friendly with her and her husband so. yeah me okay. too I'll, I'll send her a message oh facebook friend i'll say something too That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. she'll just be begging to come on now <laughs> anyway we certainly want to thank you Kay, for stopping by and and sharing some stories are just fantastic i know we could go another three hours, but we certainly want to be respectful yeah. of you too. So anyway, a big thank you to- Thank you to, to all of you. Tomorrow. Thank you for the beautiful comments and remarks. I really appreciate it. Makes me feel good. And um, yeah, yeah, take care of yourselves.